And as always, if you some comments are welcome on this show, look for us on our social media handles. I join you on TV, drop your comments. We will be glad to share your thoughts with the rest of the world. The clock, as you may know, is ticking ordinarily. But now it's beginning to run fast for especially the 12 disqualified aspirants who have been given a chance by the Electoral Commission and also by the, the Supreme Court to correct all mistakes in their presidential nomination forms. In fact, if what the court is what we are going by, watching the time, we have about an hour and 53 minutes to go before that door will be firmly shut. Your election headquarters has been on the ground checking in all the camps, especially the one whose case opened up this Pandora's box, the Progressive People's Party. Let's get the very latest now from Joseph Akable. He's our man on the ground at the Electoral Commission headquarters monitoring developments for us. Uh, we, will, we will speak to him in just a moment and get to the very latest because we know that there have been some movements in the Ele Electoral Commission this afternoon. But we know that the PPP have been quite vociferous since yesterday when the announcement was made up until this minute. We've been to their headquarters today. Jennifer Kramer brings us a situational report. PPP supporters here at the national headquarters of the Progressive People's Party. As you can see, they are here in their numbers and they are coming to support the presidential candidate for the PPP as he refills his nomination forms. Let me speak to a couple of them to find out exactly why they are here, why have they come all the way here to support Dr. Papa Kwesi Indu. his support for Dr. Papa Kwesi Indom and how they will not agree if the second time for the refiling of the nomination uh, forms for Dr. Papa Kwesi Indom will result in yet another disqualification. Let me see if I can speak to uh, somebody else here. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, ma'am, why are you here this afternoon? Okay, at the moment, we are here to see to it that everything going on with the Electoral Commission and the and and the Progressive People Party is being solved so that Dr. Baba Kutindum can take part in the election. That's why we are here. So we are here to support the Progressive People Party. We are here to make sure that everything goes on perfectly before 5 p.m. And what if it doesn't go perfectly well? Then what happens? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure everything will go on well. Yes, with God, everything will go on well. Yeah. So some views here. Okay, let me speak to Madam over here. Ma'am, please, why are you here? I'm here because I want Dr. Indom to be on the balloting paper. Because everybody wants to see the balloting that Dr. Indom is on the balloting. Everybody needs Dr. Indom. Dr. Indom is the one who can make Ghana certified. He, he can do Ghana well. He can perform the nation. So all the parties, as they are, they are going, all of them say they have tired. They want to see Dr. Indom to come the economy. He should come and then let the economy be as we want because he is a man who can make Ghanaian to be happy. Ghanaian who can enjoy the economy. He is, he is a jubilee and he can let us be happy. He can make jobs so that everybody will get money on their pocket. They can pay their light bill, they can pay their water bill, they can
can pay their, their rent and they can put everything and take care of their children. They can take care of the world. They can perform Ghana. Dotendom is the best man to perform the nation. Dotendom is the best man to perform Ghana because he wants him. He wants him back. Everybody wants Dotendom. Everybody wants Dotendom. Dotendom is the best man. He is the best. He Very fervent support here for Dr. Papa Kwesi Indom at the national headquarters of the PPP. Um, all the supporters who are here, they have come in their numbers and they are more still coming. They are supporters lined across the streets. They are supporters inside the compound. The only place that they haven't gone is inside the building where they are doing the refiling of the nomination forms. We'll see if we can speak to some of the executives as well to see how the filing process is going. But for now, here we are in the foyer of the PPP, the Progressive People's Party National Headquarters. I'm Jennifer Ikwamwa for Joy News. Now, let's happen within the last hour at uh, the PPP's headquarters. We'll bring you the very latest from there in just a moment. But we know that the action actually is at the headquarters of the Electoral Commission. That's where all the disqualified presidential candidates are trooping in between now and 5 p.m. to present their forms, hopefully, with all mistakes corrected and submitted in due time before anything else can happen so we know who ends up on the ballot paper come December 7. Let's get an update now from Joseph Akablea, our man monitoring proceedings for us. Joseph, good afternoon to you. Uh, first, give us the very latest. What's happening at the EC headquarters as we speak? Yeah, good afternoon, Francis. Um, in actual sense, just some a uh, few minutes ago, I must say about two or three minutes ago, uh, the NDP team led by uh, the party secretary, Mohamed Frempon, uh, he just arrived some few minutes ago. Um, what is not clear is as to whether they've come back with a form that has been completed in terms of the various mistakes that they are presenting or as to whether they are rather coming to pick the form. That is what is not so clear. But he just walked into the IPA conference room and are waiting to be called to enter the office of the returning officer, that is Electoral Commission Chair, Madam Salato. So in terms of the latest that has happened, that is just what uh, happened just some few minutes ago, Francis. Okay, now we know that some other individuals made it today to the EC headquarters. You've mentioned in the last hour it's the NDP that's made it, but t talk us through the major developments today as regards the candidates who've been able to come submit their forms. Uh, certainly, the biggest one has been that of the Progressive People's uh, Party, the party that has been at the neck and neck uh, battle with the EC all the way through the various court cases and subsequently uh, getting one victory and uh, secondly getting uh, a, a judgment that affected all the other candidates as well. Uh, not so long ago, within about 45 minutes ago, uh, the lawyer who represented the party's flag bearer in court, lawyer Aikwe Otu, exited few, not so long ago and he uh, talked about the fact that they came to correct that mistake upon which the EC decided to reject their nomination form. And that is the subscription of Richard Asseda, whom they are picking off the their form entirely, and they replaced with two others because he signed in two different places. Now, apart from that, the indication we got from the we team was that that mistake was the only focus. You recall there was a reportage uh, that yesterday that there were other mistakes the commission identified as well. Now, the precious news I'm picking up is the fact that indeed the parties make efforts to correct those mistakes as well. The number we are told is not 105, it's rather 85, but we are told it's on 105 pages. And so that was what uh, made the communication a bit. And the understanding we are getting is that they are making efforts to indeed correct those mistakes as well. The other issue has to do with... Okay, but Joseph, just before you jump to the others, just for clarity, for the PPP's form, you're saying that for the new ones, the new errors found, they are 85 on 105 papers. Is, is that what you're saying? Exactly. That is the understanding we are getting here at the Commission interacting with resources. That's the information we are picking up is that there were 85 issues, 105 pages uh, that were identified. But the indication we got when we spoke to the lawyer was that their interest was correct, the single one. But still, we've seen some party executives still coming. And in fact, we understand Dr. Indum's two sons, Atifi Indum, and they are also on their way back to the Commission's office after they left some few minutes ago. We have been told again that. They have all the subscribers at the party headquarters, and they are bringing them in to correct those mistakes that the commission has identified as well. So clearly, when we interacted with lawyer Oti, the understanding we got was that that wasn't their focus, but it appears they are making some efforts to correct that. As I speak to you now, the party's director of communication, Park Oakon, is inside the IPA conference room, seated right now, and is waiting for the other colleagues to join him. So that's okay. the PPP. That's issue. for PPP. Just some more clarity in that corner before we move to the other candidates, Joseph. We know that yesterday, for the announcement, uh, the people were supposed to produce one Mr. Seda, the man who signed and it became an issue. Has he also made it with the PPP today to the AC headquarters? 
Yes, they actually came to the office with him. Uh, he came in the company of two others, and they, all the three of them entered the EC chair's office. And so they brought him in, I mean, and the point that lawyer also was making when we spoke to him is the fact that the commission asked that they produce him, which they have done. Then again, they are saying that take his name off his entirely and put the two new subscribers to sign for the two different districts that are in contention because uh, the report or the report that came from the EC is the fact that uh, they, he signed in more than one constituency. So they've now brought him here. The EC has seen him to verify which of the signatures is his. Then again, lawyer Iko to tells us that in fact he told the commission that is Richard has said that told the commission that that this constituency they are talking about that he signed, he has no idea where that one is coming from. He has never been to that place before, and he's not the one who authored that particular signature. So his name has been taken off completely. Two new subscribers have replaced uh, the various uh, district in contention. Okay, that's for the Progressive People's Party. They are working hard to meet the 5 p.m. deadline. Let's see what happens in that corner. But just as we know, other parties to have made it today to the EC headquarters. Walk us through the rest of them. Uh, let's start from the GFP's Madam Ekia Donko, who uh, showed up quite early. She picked her form and she has left to correct those mistakes. She has not showed up here at the commission's office. ITP's Kofi Akpalu also showed up earlier. He also got hold of his form. We understand an agent from the past. He is currently at the office. He is still working, moving to and fro from the office to get the form corrected and presented in time. Um, that's of the UPP's Akwesi Ade Odike. It's one issue that appears to be a bit funny, and it gets more complicated by the day. The whole point is that you recall his form was not accepted because of a pending uh, court case. Now, the understanding you are getting was that even at that point when that announcement was made, uh, they, in fact, the form was not even vetted in the first place uh, because of the court, pending court issue. So now the, the communication or interaction he had with the EC uh, team gave the suggestion that that court matter had ended. And that gave them the clearance to now vet the form or which they identified some mistakes and gave the form back to him. But as I speak to you now, I've been able to intercept a document purported to be coming from uh, what the lawyers of the gentleman who is challenging or the case status as a flag bearer of the party. Mm. And that gives the indication a lesser rating commission. I'd bear the commission's mind to the fact that the matter, contrary to what he told them this morning, is still pending in court. So they are not happy about the fact that the commission has given the form back to him to correct those mistakes. So the gentleman came in not long ago to present a copy of the documents to the electoral commission, a letter uh, pointing out the fact that the matter is still in dispute. So those are the issues that have transpired so far here at the electoral commission. Okay, Joseph. So to summarize this, and for those who may be watching now, to make it simple, for the 12 who have been given the opportunity to come correct their mistakes and file their nomination forms all over again, no one as yet has been able to file as we speak, isn't it? Exactly, but the, the challenge really is the fact that even for those who have had interactions with the commission, it appears the commission is still holding on. We are expecting them to address uh, the press later around 5 p.m. when we are expecting them to tell us those whose form has actually been accepted. So as it stands now, we've seen people come in and go out, and it's, what is so, it's not so clear is the fact that uh, whether their form has been accepted or not, but the understanding that we get from those who are working out is the fact that there is still some more work that they have to uh, do in terms of the annual Before it's done. Okay. So it appears they are still racing against time to get All right. their form accepted. Joseph, stay on the line for me briefly. Uh, so let's now bring you a live update from the EC headquarters, live pictures from the scene. We are learning that the NDP is actually in the conference room of the EC headquarters as we speak, trying uh, to finish up the process and correcting mistakes on your, on your nomination. So let's take you now live to the EC headquarters for live visuals of what's happening as we speak. As and when we have the live link, we will bring it to you here on your election headquarters. Remember that for the 12 disqualified aspirants, the Supreme Court yesterday ruled that the nomination period has been extended to close of date today, which means that by 5 p.m. today, any disqualified aspirant who may not have been given a hearing previously may have missed this opportunity by 5 p.m. if they are not taking full advantage of it. We'll bring you updates here on uh, the Pulse on the Joy News channel on Malta TV. And uh, let's get back to Joseph Akablay. He's monitoring developments for us there at the EC headquarters. Joseph, we just saw the NDP uh, with forms in front of them trying to complete it. Tell us a bit more about what's going into that. Uh, say again, Francis. I'm asking about what we just saw on our television screens, the NDP in the conference room of the Electoral Commission. What exactly are they doing with the forms? 
Well, so that is the party aspect, if you want me from point that you saw, you saw a short while ago. In actual sense, it still has to do with the mistakes on their forms that they want to correct, and that is what they've come back with. We understand they picked their form somewhere yesterday. They went and worked on it, and they've brought it back, talked to the commission, as well as they've been able to uh, satisfy what the commission wants them to satisfy before the form is accepted. So as you saw on live pictures that came up not long ago, they are waiting patiently. That is where when you come, you actually wait. That is the iPad conference room. So you wait, you sign the attendance, then someone comes to later and draws your attention to the fact that the returning officer, who is the lecturer commission chair, Madam Sarot, of saying, is ready to have an interaction with you. Then you move over to your first, the hair office, you speak to her, then you come out and tell us what exactly transpired and as to whether you are satisfied with the engagement so far. More often than not, a good number of the party agents or the party officials who come in, they often prepare to have that engagement with the electoral commission chair before they tell us what exactly the situation is. To so ask the they are waiting patiently for the attend to interact with the electoral commission chair and present those forms that you saw in the live pictures right before at the party secretary. Present those forms to the electoral commission chair. All right, Joseph, uh, stay on the line for us because we will be with you from now till 5 p.m. when the door is firmly shut by the electoral commission on the nomination period. The chance for which the 12 uh, disqualified aspirants have that opportunity to correct mistakes on your, on your nomination forms and we file in the hope that this will bring closure to the matter. But as you can imagine, the decision of the court and how the EC has interpreted this directive by the Supreme Court has brought in some concerns from the National Peace Council and also the Center for Democratic Development, a civil society group that are raising concerns today about the posture of, of the commission and how they are going about this work. Let's begin with the National Peace Council because we know that in the last two to three hours they have been meeting the leadership of the Electoral Commission to try and understand what exactly they are doing and the work they are doing as regards the Supreme Court's judgment from yesterday. The uh, chairperson of the National Peace Council, Reverend Emmanuel Asante, has been speaking to Joy News about what exactly they want to see done by the Electoral Commission. Let me make it clear, you know, that when it comes to elections, the Electoral Commission is mandated to ensure that they prepare the level playing grounds, the rules of the game are set in such a way that people will not have a cause to be worried about how things are going. So far, our courts have come in. On a number of occasions, issues have cropped up. People have gone to the courts, and the courts have been up and doing. One would expect that at this stage, especially with the last ruling from the Supreme Court, the way will be set with a proper electoral calendar that has been set for us to go through so that come December 7th, we'll be able to um, go to the polls without any doubts in our minds. Unfortunately, there seem to be still some wranglings here and there. My advice, first of all, to the Electoral Commission is very simple. They have the responsibility to ensure that the ground is level. They should set, they should ensure that they do not do anything that will create tension in the nation. I believe that the ruling of the Supreme Court should bring finality, especially in respect of the um, presidential candidates who were um, disqualified because they have been given the opportunity to resubmit. I don't think that any more impediments should be put on their way, but the spirit of the ruling is that they should be given opportunity also to be part of the whole process. And I would wish that the Electoral Commission would do the best that they can to ensure that um, the, the spirit of the ruling is carried out. I would also want to appeal to the political parties themselves to make sure that they do not allow emotions to override the kinds of things that they need to do. After all, they have today um, to submit what they need to submit. I will plead with them to do the best that they can to ensure that the proper uh, documentation is done so that all of them will be there for Ghanaians to have a wider choice in terms of the people they want 
to um, be their, um, the person they want to be their president. Let the Ghanaian public too, you know, no matter how um, aggrieved we may be, how tensed up we may be, I think it is important for us to think about Mother Ghana, that we do not allow the tensed up situation to lead us into doing things that will not augur well for us before, during, and after the election. A lot of people have been saying the Peace Council is not talking and all that. Yeah. If an issue is before a court, because we are also the creature of the law, we want to believe that the legal institutions have what it takes to deal with it. And they have done a very good job. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate them for the good job that we, they have done. Let the EC, let the political parties, let all stakeholders also do their part to ensure peaceful election in this country. In as much as we're all hoping that the Supreme Court will bring finality to this semen confusion mm -hmm. uh, within this electoral process, there's some kind of confusion as to the number of errors being created by these political parties. And the EC doesn't appear to be willing to... I will, I will humbly plead with the EC to be circumspect. And for the sake of the peace of Mother Ghana, ensure that they do right things, help them to do right things. Of course, I mean, at the end of the day, if somebody hasn't done what is expected of them once they've been given the proper opportunity and hearing, they still have not been able to do it, they will have themselves to blame. But the EC should not give the impression that they are out there simply to um, ensure that some people are disqualified. That is the impression that is being created. And they should disabuse the minds of the public by showing that they are ready to really help these ones come on board. That's the chairperson of the National Peace Council, Reverend Emmanuel Asante, uh, speaking to join us today on the sidelines of a book launch. But clearly, this is a matter that has caught a lot of attention from not only those from the National Peace Council, but also from civil society and security experts as well. One of them, Dr. Christianin, says that the Council of State and the Peace Council must, as a matter of urgency, step in at a time like this. hearing there are some contestations about the actual number of corrections that need to be done now interpretationally one can ask the appeal that was sent from the EC to the Supreme Court did the Supreme Court know the actual number of corrections that the parties had to make and did that influence the 36 hour deadline that was given. If the East, the Supreme Court did not know the actual... Let's return now to the EC headquarters. We know that there's a lot of activity now with an hour and 30 minutes to go. Many of the party representatives are making it there with their nomination forms. Let's get the details now. Joseph Akablay joins me live now. Joseph, we know the NDP just stepped out of the conference room. Fill us in. What's happening now? Well, just a few minutes ago, uh, the team of the GCPP also just left the conference room as well, and they are crossing over to the other side. Like I explained earlier, there are actually two rooms. One is the IPA conference room, with the other being the office of the chair itself. And that is the point where once you come in and you sign the attendance, and they are ready to have you in the other building, you move into the other side. If you can still see the live shot, uh, still in the conference room, we have uh, the PPP party chairman, Nialo Tebriyamo, just walked in and took his seat as well. And just when I was talking about the GCPP one, uh, that particular one, the team was led by John Amedeka. He's a running mate of Dr. Henry Lassie. And he came in and he has gone in to interact with the commission, all in an attempt to correct their mistakes and get the form presented before the 5 p.m. deadline. Uh, so that is what is happening here at the IPA conference room, Francis. Okay, so just for clarity, the PPP's executives are sitting in the conference room as we speak. What are they doing now? Waiting for the EC chair? What's happening? 
Exactly, that is what they are doing, Francis. So they are, that is where they are, wait until it's your turn and you are called to cross over to the other side. So if the shots are so uh, that we are pitching, uh, you can see uh, two children of Dr. Pakistan Dumbi are also seated there. They are waiting patiently for their turn to be called and they cross over to the other side. Uh, then so, again, uh, yeah, Francis. So have they finished uh, correcting the mistakes on their nomination forms? As they, as they sit and wait, what exactly are they waiting for? We just need to understand that. Yes, yeah, so what they are waiting for now is because when they left the other time, others also came in. And like I, I mentioned not long ago, uh, that's of the NPC as well as the GCPP. They are all in the same office. So it means that they will have to wait for some time before they are called to cross over to that office. So what is being done, they have, in terms of their corrections, they are still doing that. And they are still waiting their turn in terms of their second appearance to work on the other mistakes that were pointed out to them. Uh, the parties are general secretary. Uh, National Secretary, I must say, Musala Mohammed, he just walked into the conference room. In fact, as I speak to you now, he's conferring with the party's policy advisor. Okay. Earlier, the PPP had us believe that they did not have access to their nomination forms. When did they receive it, and do, do they still have it in their custody, or they have returned with the corrections done? Uh, we understand that they, they managed to get hold of it somewhere yesterday, but the, the real issue is that it's up to the mistake or the nature of the mistake that you are correcting. And once you identify it, you just send a list of those who are infecting the changes in terms of the subscribers and their subsequent signatures on it, and you present that form uh, to them now. So that is how the process goes by. So you don't necessarily need to have the form in your custody. Okay. Now, for the other candidates that we know have been there since morning, the UFP is one that really comes to mind. What happened to Mr. Ajani Watting? Has he finished his uh, f presentation of the nomination forms? For him, what is uncertain is still as to whether he was able to get hold of the form, actually, because when uh, I last spoke to him, he was waiting impatiently. Uh, he was very anxious. He wanted to get hold of his form uh, so that he leaves uh, the commission's office to ensure that he rectifies the mistake in time. And the last time I spoke to him, he has still not got hold of his form. I haven't seen him since then. That was about two hours ago. So I can't really tell as to whether he has got hold of the form or he still hasn't. Speaking of other uh, candidates that are still looking to beat the deadline of 5 p.m., the IPP, we are made to understand, came for their forms and have left to the courts. Walk us through what is happening with them. Yes, so uh, the party's flag bearer came actually and uh, he got hold of the form. Uh, he left afterwards and a gentleman who we are told uh, is, belongs to the party as well is the one who is working on the corrections for them. And he uh, just exited a place not uh, too long ago. In fact, as I speak to you now, uh, the NDP's general secretary has left the EC test office now and he's standing outside. He just needs to get some clarity from him uh, as to what um, exactly transpired in there and what they are supposed to do. So now, if you can give me just a minute, Francis, let me try and get him on and get some explanation on what exactly transpired. Okay. So Joseph is trying to pick a, a quick word with the officials there at the conference room of the Electoral Commission. We know that deadline is 5 p.m. today. When the inspector has given the then we then we said that it was a problem. So as we most of our members are downstairs, Bernie's channel on Multi TV's deadline day for the 12 disqualified uh, presidential aspirants who've been given that chance by the ruling of the Supreme Court to correct anomalies on their nomination forms and present that form by 5 p.m. today, before 5 p.m. today, so they can have a shot at being on the ballot paper come December 7. We know that this process has been one closely monitored by many stakeholders, including civil society groups. One of them is the Center for Democratic Development. And uh, we can ask you to senior research fellow, uh, Dr. Kojo Asante, they've released a press statement today raising some concerns about the manner in which the Electoral Commission is going about the implementation of the Supreme Court ruling. Dr. Asante joins me now via Skype. Uh, Doc, thank you for joining us. And uh, we, are, we are still keeping our eyes on developments at the Electoral Commission headquarters we bring you live visuals as and when we have developments for you. But, Doc, you've released a, a, um, a statement today. Clearly, you have, you have some concerns with the manner in which the Electoral Commission is going about with this. Walk us through them. What are your concerns as we speak? 
Well, I mean, I think the situation is very, very fluid. Um, one of the things that I think was a little bit difficult for for, for all of us was that uh, the EC had taken this matter to the Supreme Court ostensibly to ensure that the, the Supreme Court decision can bring finality to the, the many suits. This was because we were already uh, sort of facing uh, a, a potential constitutional crisis because the notice of poll was, was due and we needed to resolve these matters quickly. And I think uh, the Supreme Court did a brilliant job in, in the kinds of orders that they made, the, uh, the ruling that they gave, and the consequential orders to make sure that the whole process actually comes to uh, uh, an amicable uh, 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 position where everybody will be satisfied. So it was, it's a bit odd that the, the same person that actually took this matter to get finality now generates even more issues uh, for you know for us to now worry about. So I, we think that 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 was really uh, a strange decision. But the, I think it's also unfair on the political parties that the reasons why they were disqualified now there are new reasons that have been introduced uh, in this processing, and that. Is, is basically not, uh, it's a breach of administrative justice for us uh, as far as we are concerned. But Doc, if you, if you study closely what the EC has been saying in this regard, they say that there was a process, it was challenged. The Supreme Court says, give these 12 the opportunity to correct anomalies on their forms. Maybe in that ruling, it was not explicit that as stated on October 10 at that news conference, those mistakes. So maybe, just maybe, this ruling gave the Electoral Commission room to interpret this to their own understanding and go with their regulations. But isn't the honors on the EC? Because it's the same EC that laid out the timetable for the Supreme Court, that they were running against time. So, I mean, when you have now been given the opportunity to resolve the matter, why do you create even more work than is necessary? So when you went through it the first time and it was clear that these were the most important things that disqualify the candidate, and now they've been given the opportunity to address them, why don't we just go with what the stated reasons are and allow them to do the corrections, rather than find, uh, what, a hundred and so new corrections to be made? So now, as you from, from the reports, there's all this chaos. It's possible that people will make more mistakes. And then what would the Electoral Commission come and say? Well, they didn't meet the requirements and they therefore don't qualify. I think it's just, uh, for me, it's a bit difficult for me to, to process why this decision, uh, I mean, to interpret the decision this way. And but, to but this Doc, is it, is, it, is it also your interpretation that per what the Supreme Court told us yesterday, all candidates should correct only what was announced by the EC on the 10th of October and ends there, all of them end up on the, on the ballot paper for the December 7 elections? No, I mean, I, I, I think that for every, you know, anybody who knows a bit about administrative law will tell you that you have to have a, a legitimate expectation that if the, the institution says that this is the reason why you were disqualified, it should be on the same reason that you are allowed to, to correct so that you can be, you get back onto the ballot. So it's not, it's not to take it as a wholesale and say, well, it means that everybody's on the ballot. But at least you have to be given the opportunity to correct what the EC said you had done wrong or you have done mistakenly. And I think adding new things is not something that was part of the stated reasons in the first place. And the, the extension of the nomination period was not meant for the EC to start the whole exercise again. It, it, the only reason why we've extended the nomination period is because that opportunity was not offered in the first place. So I don't know how you come to that interpretation uh, to now say, well, uh, there were other errors that were not discovered and therefore we should now start looking at them. Bearing in mind that the time period is so short and you yourself have acknowledged that. So um, the, some of the, the policy decision-making there is, is really problematic, and it's not helping the matter. 
we should avoid this you know attempt to have to take everything back to court and just keep the, you know in a circular motion just going back and forth to court whilst the clock keep ticking for everybody and uh, i really think that we have to deal with this in a much more better Okay, now we have just about an hour and 19 minutes to go before the nomination deadline is firmly shut. So, for the CDD, yes, you've raised these concerns about the conduct of the Electoral Commission, but what would you have the EC do differently after today? Oh, there's a lot of uh, issues that have to be addressed. I hope that, I mean, this is still uh, the, the Supreme Court uh, basically has these consequential orders have to be enforced. So we are going all the way to Thursday to make sure that the balloting is happening. If the corrections are made and people are put on the ballot, the balloting is done and the notice of poll is issued. So the process is, you know, doesn't end today. Uh, we're looking to Thursday for that process to be completed. And uh, the Supreme Court still has uh, a role to play uh, within this period. But I think going forward, we have to look at the issue of discretionary authority and how that is exercised. This is, this is important. We have made this case over and over again that we need to be able to have rules as to how discretionary authority is going to be exercised. And this particular exercise of discretionary authority is one that uh, has proven you know, very problematic. So the EC would have to promulgate some uh, subsidiary legislation that will govern how it exercises a lot of the discretion it has uh, under the different statutes that have been passed. Okay, let me just pick up the last paragraph in, in the press release you gave us today. You say that you are calling on social society organizations, professional bodies, faith-based groups, uh, and some others to support the center's call for the EC to avoid a potential constitutional crisis. For those who may not understand what this means, what do you point to when you say we should avoid a potential constitutional crisis? I mean, I think if you if you recall and if you were following uh, the the processes up to the, the Supreme Court uh, decision, we had cases that were at the High Court that were not before the Supreme Court. The only way in which the Supreme Court could exercise its supervisory ju jurisdiction was to open the door for everybody, and therefore, it in a in a way sort of uh, completely uh, remove it, remove all the other cases from the High Court back, you know, onto the realm of the the EC to handle. So that, for me, that I think was a brilliant stroke by the Supreme Court to deal with what was becoming a very difficult situation. Now we have already uh, moved the notice of poll. Uh, so far, nobody has contested it. Some people had said that this was something that we could not move that the Supreme Court had made a decision, we've moved it. So we've changed, we've changed basically the electoral rules in that, in that instance. Now, how far that can we go? If, for example, at the close of all of these processes, the EC also comes back and says, well, uh, yes, we went through all of these things and we still see errors and therefore uh, we are disqualifying people. Would those people have a right to go back to the Supreme Court and would that extend uh, the, the notice of poll and other uh, uh, processes that has to follow? So the, these are, for us, we are thinking that this was a very simple order and that if the EC had gone with the initial intention of the Supreme Court, which was to correct the stated reasons uh, or mistakes, then we should really have resolved this in a very easy way. Um, so that's, that's what we mean by averting a potential uh, constitutional crisis. crisis. But, Doc, uh, based on what you just said, I just need to understand this. Are you then saying that the EC, per what you put out in the statement, should allow all 12 the opportunity to correct the anomalies, and then on December 7, all 17 be put on the ballot paper for Ghanaians to decide who to vote for? Of course, if they, status, if they satisfy the, uh, 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 the corrections that... You know, if they make the corrections and they easily satisfy with that, yes. If rather than, I mean, for us, the, the, for example, the PPP case, if it was the issue about one person subscribing, I think, or having different names or different signatures, and he corrects that, that matter should be resolved, and uh, Dr. Endin should be on the ballot.
that is it for me. That that I think is the uh, is the order of the Supreme Court, and that should be adhered to. But at the moment, it seems to be a whole different interpretation of 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 the of the EC uh, the Supreme Court ruling. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kojo Asante, uh, for speaking to us today, Senior Research Fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, Ghana, sharing his thoughts with us on a press release they just released uh, a couple of minutes ago, raising concerns about how the Electoral Commission of Ghana is going about implementing the judgment set out by the Supreme Court yesterday. Now, as we mentioned, we're keeping an eye closely on developments at the Electoral Commission because we know that in some uh, one hour and 13 minutes, the door for the 12 disqualified candidates, uh, presidential aspirants, will be firmly shut. For those who will go through, we'll bring you the details. For those who will not make it, we'll speak to them here on the show and tell you what things are looking like with 28 days to go to the December 7 elections. Now, as I mentioned, yes, the, the, the CDD may have had their own take on this matter, but, the, but those in the security space also have raised some concerns. We can now hear from Dr. Christine in explaining why the EC will also need to do some more work just before December 7. From what I'm hearing, there are some contestations about the actual number of corrections that need to be done. Now, interpretationally, one can ask, the appeal that was sent from the EC to the Supreme Court, did the Supreme Court know the actual number of corrections that the parties had to make? And did that influence the 36 hour deadline that was given? If the, East, the Supreme Court did not know the actual numbers, and the political parties themselves, from what they are saying, did not know the actual numbers um, in terms of the mistakes that they had to correct, then that creates a little bit of a problem. I am not worried. I think it's important that we clarify this as quickly as possible and then use the legal institutional mechanism that we have to answer those questions. We must go to the pools with a clear mind that our institutions have functioned as optimally and as effectively as they can function, having had access to all the information and the knowledge that they need to make the decisions necessary. From what we are gathering from the parties, like yesterday we spoke to a member of the PPP, they had serious reservations as to exactly what these errors are that they are being expected to, to correct, and the EC is not coming forth with this. Looking at this posture, should we be worried at the way and manner the EC is running? Well, I think most certainly the Council of State and the National Peace Council must step in to ensure that they have all parties have full specific information relating to which aspects of the applications will need to be corrected. I cannot make a correction to a mistake I've made as assessed by you if I don't know the mistake. So there are fundamental, commonsensical, practical reasons why the EC, taking into consideration the larger, more critical national interest and stability issues, must engage the parties and to ensure that if those mistakes are dealing with ticks instead of crosses in boxes, then they can be done as quickly as possible. The essence of an election is that in, in the short to medium and long term, it creates an enabling environment for a secure, stable, functional country that can, that can bring about economic development. It is not in the interest of only one institution to say these are the rules and I'm going to interpret them as stringently as possible and in my own time and as and when I want. No. I think the national interest and the national interest here is the peace of mind of Ghanaians to go about their business and to vote and to let this country continue running. That is what must guide every single decision that's made. Right, so we're still uh, here on the past on the Joint News Channel of Multi TV. We're keeping an eye on nomination deadline. 12 presidential aspirants, those disqualified initially by the Electoral Commission, have a very fine opportunity between now and 5 p.m. 
to correct mistakes on your nomination forms, present and uh, file them today before 5 p.m., and then they'll have a shot on appearing on the ballot paper come December 7th. We are monitoring that process very, very closely here on the show, and that uh, we can't return right now to the EC headquarters. Joseph Akable is standing by for us with an update. Joseph, uh, what's happening at the EC headquarters now? Well, so Francis, uh, it has to do with the, all the parties, the disqualified nominees trying uh, to meet the deadline. And a bit about the main party that has been at the center of the entire controversy is the Progressive People's Party. I'm actually joined here by the party's director of communication, Paco Akon, just to give some clarity to what has been the engagement of the party with the Electoral Commission since that judgment came in from the Supreme Court and as to whether it's just a single mistake they are correcting or they are correcting more than one mistake. So we can now speak to him. Thank you so much for joining me. First and foremost, uh, since that judgment came in from the Supreme Court, what has been the engagement between the party and the Electoral Commission? Well, thank you very much. Um, as soon as we got the judgment, we decided to proceed to the EC office yesterday. Uh, we had the opportunity to engage with the chair um, around 8 p.m. And that was when we were told that the errors on our forms are more than um, 100. And so we quickly had to go back and, 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 and find out what it is that we can do to meet the deadline. Because, of course, today is a deadline. Yesterday, we virtually wasted the day. Um, as I've earlier indicated, we left here around uh, uh, 8 p.m. And so it was uh, quite difficult for us to, to get our people. But we tried. We tried so hard and we were able to get uh, some of, of, of the members uh, to, to endorse it. We came earlier in the day to... Uh, yeah, I recall uh, the team came led by a uh, son of your flag bearer. He came in the first time. Um, the, the sense we got from that interaction with your lawyer was the fact that you had corrected uh, one mistake. You are still working on the others, right? Yeah, precisely the point, because we all know that the EC uh, went to court uh, with, with the fact that we have committed only one error. Uh, and so for them to tell us that the errors committed are more than 100, of co it, it was uh, mind-boggling. And so we had to go and, uh, I mean, go and re-strategize as to what it is that we can do to meet the deadline. So we called our people and, 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 and they, they, they came in from all the different places and we have been able to do that. So we are only waiting for the EC to give us the opportunity to present to them the amended uh, version of the 100 that they identified as having errors in them. Uh, just for clarity, so it means that uh, the party brought over about 432 uh, people who subscribe for the party. You brought all of them over uh, to the capital city. If that is the case, how difficult or easy was it? It, it, was, it was really difficult because um, when we left here last night and we were told that we had more than 100 people, we were all thinking, how, how can we get them to, to, to Accra to endorse a form? And so we devised a strategy. Everybody picked a region. They contacted the regional chairman. They gave them the constituency uh, uh, chairman. And then they also decentralized the process. And thankfully, we were able to do that. Uh, most of them got to Accra around 3, 4 AM this morning. And we have taken them through the process. They have completed the forms. And we are here to submit. But ironically, you know, the EC had gone to court, High Court, Supreme Court, to, to, uh, with the uh, excuse that they disqualified us because they realized there was one error on our form. And so we came earlier in the day to present to them the amended uh, version identified. But they told us, no, they are not going to accept that and that we need to present to them amendment of the hundred they told us last night so that is why we are here this afternoon they have called our chairman and our lawyer and hopefully in the next 20 or 30 they should be out of the office and what it is that they, they, they want from us uh, well, so that is the director of communication of the Progressive Post Party, Park or Akon, bringing some clarity to the issue. He tells us that they've been able to correct uh, the over 100 errors that the commission identified and pointed out to them after they had corrected a single mistake. So as it stands, he says they are still waiting to have audience with the chairman of the Electoral Commission and to find out whether that which they've corrected and they are presenting before the commission would be accepted. He also explained that they've indeed brought over their subscribers and they are the party headquarters waiting to correct any mistake that might come up. Just a bit of 
addition before I work out, uh, Francis, is the fact that the DPP's Thomas and Yako Ward Bill uh, just walked into uh, the IPA conference room some few minutes ago. You can uh, have a look at him now. Thomas Nyako Ward Bill, uh, he's the gentleman in there. At the very initial moment when the nomination form was presented, he didn't uh, present the filing fee. So you can see him holding the filing fee with him now, very ready uh, to present that. So I'll still be staying here at the IPA conference room to bring you the very latest as and when uh, necessary. Over to you, Francis. Uh, uh, sorry, Joseph, you, you are not going off just here because your eyes and ears are the EC headquarters today. Uh, yes, we can see Tian Ward Brew walk in with his nomination forms firmly under his armpit as he seriously opened an envelope. But uh, what was his particular issue with his forms and what is he doing about it today? In terms of his form, for which reason the commission decided to reject uh, the form, it had issues with some of the subscribers. In fact, the commission was very emphatic in that release, pointing out the fact that uh, the key couldn't meet the requirements in terms of about 432 subscribers that one is supposed to provide on his nomination form. Apart from the fact that we are, we know for a fact that indeed he didn't present uh, the filing fee as well. Uh, so today, I think once the extension has taken place. It's all in line with taking advantage of that opportunity in order to uh, get that clarity and be allowed to correct uh, the mistakes on the form as well. So it's in line with that that he's also here. I'm trying to get closer uh, to Mr. Wardbrew and I'd speak to him uh, and get some clarity from him uh, as to what exactly uh, is the situation and what it is actually. Uh, sir, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, um, just enable us to understand uh, what exactly it is with, with your form and which challenges you've come to rectify now. That one, it comes from EC. It is EC which wrote to us that there were shortfalls in our forms, which is legitimate. And when our attention was drawn, we have also re replied to them uh, what uh, our understanding of it. That's how it is. Then later on, controversy started coming out of it. That is all that I knew. Uh, but ideally, I am saying that nobody has a, a mind for wrongdoing. No. Everybody's focus is to try and meet the aspirations of ESA. But when we came, no, they gave us only one form. So I said, ah, but one form cannot uh, be amended. You have to give us all the four forms. Then you are complying. So, so far, I haven't received the four forms. So how do I amend this? Uh, but just for a bit of clarity, I mean, I will call after that announcement came in from the commission for a good number of the parties. They were agitating. Others also proceeded uh, to file their cases in court. All this while for the DPP, you were a bit silent. We didn't hear about that. In fact, the filing fee even on the day of presentation, you didn't show up. No, it's also the, the, the timing. Because the law says two, two working days. And they said nine, 12, too short. If you want, you want the bankers drive, you go to the bank and you want to get it, it's not easy. Besides the announcement, which came, it was only on the uh, radio. It is not fair. As, as I speak to you now, if I can check my time, uh, it's just about 4 p.m. It means that you have less than two hours in actual sense to present your nomination form. You are now complaining that you don't even no, have access it's, it's to the entire booklet. No, it's coming from them. No, but you were just saying you don't even have access to the entire booklet. That, that's because they uh, gave, listen, it has been with them all along. It is they who are now giving it to us and it's uh, we gave only one and i'm saying that that one is not sufficient so the question our viewers will be wondering is that can the dpp meet the deadline no what deadline the deadline is based upon when the form is given to me yeah, but it, the commission has already stated that the deadline is 5 p.m in fact that is a directive uh, from the court no, when the court the court will not uh, force anything on you when you are not even aware of it the court doesn't do that the court is a human institution See, uh, for instance, you know me, I, had, I traveled. I went to Lagos last, uh, uh, I think, Saturday. I only came today. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas Nyako Wardbill. Uh, he's the flag bearer of the Democratic People's Party, the DPP, and he's also here in line with uh, the window of opportunity that was given by the Supreme Court, and he hopes he'll be able to correct his form in time, all waiting patiently to have an opportunity to present uh, the over 100 errors that they've corrected, like they confirmed to us, and they are waiting uh, to present those ones to uh, the Electoral Commission Chair. Right, Joseph Akable reporting live from the EC headquarters. And ladies and gentlemen, it's just 59 minutes to deadline for all 12 disqualified 
presidential aspirants to file their nomination forms after 5 p.m. That door will be firmly shut. We are keeping an eye closely on developments that will bring you the updates here on your election headquarters, the Dijon News Channel on Multi TV.